Hey guys, it's a good thing that the Bosch drive systems have a high IP rating ingress protection against water and dust and mud and everything because it is sprinkling out here a little bit, but this is actually a really good setting to review the Cube Kathmandu Hybrid 45 Class 3 Speed Pedelec 625, 625 watt hour Bosch Power 2 battery. I love this bike. I feel like they did everything that I would have chosen if I was di designing it. Um, and you do pay for you do pay for it a little bit. It's forty eight ninety five uh, USD, which is you know it's it's more expensive. But this is a premium brand. Cube is a German company, and they produce a wide range of electric bikes. And most of them come in multiple frame sizes. That is the case here with the Kathmandu Speed, uh, the forty five. And we're looking at the high step. They call it the men's, but they, they also have like a mixed D, kind of a mid step. So it's a lower standover height, a little bit more approachable, especially if you put a trunk bag or panniers or something back here. I love that they do that. So the, the first three smallest sizes are all that kind of a mid step design. And then you've got three more frame sizes that are all like this larger frame. So there's a bit of overlap there. So five frame sizes. Uh, when you actually look at the measurements. I have measured this extensively, this exact bike. Uh, I weighed it at 57.5 pounds and then I went to their website just to kind of, you know, I compare the specs and stuff and they, they had it at 57 pounds. So very accurate. I love to see that. It's not like they're trying to miss you, mislead you and weighing the bike without the pedals or something like that. I just feel like I can trust this company. They got a great warranty. Uh, of course, two years comprehensive because it does have Bosch drive systems. Very trustworthy, uh, very, very powerful. Lots of potential with this bike. So I mentioned this is a good setting. It's because we're on this like kind of a gravel trail, but we also have some pavement over there and it is raining a bit. We got some puddles as you can see. And so having these fenders is really nice. Um, and also these slightly wider tires, this suspension fork, it's gonna smooth out some of those bumps and just create a, a more comfortable ride. And this bike is, I'll just start with, with the wheels. Really interesting uh, wheel size, tire size here, 28 by 2.15. And these are Schwabi Marathon E+. Plus. A lot of e-bike specific hardware on this bike. Very, very nice headlight which is another one of the e-bikes sort of specific things. It's the Pro-E 110 Acid branded. That is a cube brand. So whenever you see acid, that means it's like a cube part. So these fenders are acid. We got that, that rear fender as well. So the fenders are great. They offer good coverage because the, the tires are a little bit wider. They've kind of got this hybrid tread. They do have flat, less puncture protection. And they've also got that reflective sidewall stripe. So it feels like these are gonna do great. Whether you're on the road, in the city, you wanna have that visibility. Got the lights and everything and you've got the reflective sidewalls or you're out on the trail and you need a little bit more traction a little bit more stability width that kind of thing so excellent choice here alex rims 36 hole so 36 spokes front and rear i love that they went with black hubs black spokes you can see they have the reinforcement eyelets so you're not going to get uh, cracking or wearing on those rims quite as quickly or as easily if you're truing the wheels frequently. Like this is this is a great touring platform. And again, the fact that it does ride a little bit faster, up to 45 kilometers per hour, that's why it says 45 in the name, 28 miles per hour. They've done a lot of other upgrades too. So SR Suntour Mobi 45, this is an air fork, lighter weight, a little bit more tunable. So you can adjust the air pressure over here at the top of the left stanchion. And then we've got lockout with a couple different clicker positions on that. And then down at the bottom, we have rebound adjust. So you can really dial this thing in. And then these are 34 millimeter stanchions and they are aluminum black anodized coating. So they're lighter. This is not a spring fork with steel stanchions. That's what you see on some of the cheaper bikes. So highly adjustable to to fit your body weight and i think this is weighted for up to 140 kilograms about 308 pounds of total capacity including the weight of the bike so i guess you have to subtract 57 pounds uh, and then you know how much however much you weigh and then however much cargo you're carrying i love this rack interface so they've got this like rack time topper here that's bolted onto their integrated paint matched rack uh, and, and then it, the rack itself actually stabilizes and just sort of reinforces the rear fender, which is very nice because the front fender, it's just these kind of rubber bands. And I notice it kind of rattling like that when I'm out riding, even down here on the lowers of the stanchion, it's just these like rubber band kind of things. And there's one support arm on either side. It works okay. And it seems like 
a practical solution. Maybe it's lighter weight or it's just easier to take off, but it, it does make more noise. I haven't kicked the fender, but it's also just a little bit closer to your, you know, your toes, depending on the frame size and your foot size. Um, and it, while we're down here, we just got these kind of basic plastic pedals from Cube. They're not super wide or large. I might replace those with like some Wel Welgo magnesium pedals. 175 millimeters on the crank arms for this large size frame. I'm guessing you get 170 uh, maybe on the smaller frame sizes. They, they usually do a bit of adjustment, like maybe in the length of the, the stem. This is a 100 millimeter stem. Maybe you get a 90 millimeter or something depending. Uh, and notice, I mean, I think this is like 17 degree rise and we've got a bunch of different spacers here. Two fives, two tens, and then a 15 millimeter tapered spacer at the bottom. Bottom. You could flip that, you could lower it, tons of options. Notice how wide the handlebar is here. This is part of what makes this a hybrid. It's partially city bike, but it's got this really nice suspension fork, tapered steer tube, wider handlebar. That's what you'd see on a trail bike or kind of a mountain bike. It gives you a little bit more leverage and control over the bigger wheels when you're riding off road or, you know, at speed, it kind of slows down your steering. Coming back here to the integrated rack, you, it's nice that it stabilizes that rear fender. It's nice that you've got this rear light. And it's really nice that they've got this pannier hanger that's mounted below this top portion. So you could have a trunk bag, you could have panniers clipped onto the sides hanging down. And it's rated up to that 55 pounds, 25 kilogram max weight. It's even got one of these little, you know, clamp things, spring loaded clamps. One thing I wish it did have was little loops at the bottom. Uh, there are many panniers now that have a little bungee cord with a, a kind of a hook and that keeps your bags from flapping around when you're riding, especially at speed. Uh, other designs have these little plastic levers that sort of connect to uh, pannier blockers on the side. And in this case, the rack does have these two support arms that come down to meet the seat stays. It's a great rack overall. It just feels like it's a custom rack. They could have added little loops at the bottom and it would have made a difference. Yeah, there are a lot of uh, accessories that actually sit on and click in as well. Probably more available in Europe. And this model is, it's kind of a US specific because it's Speed Pedelec as well as European. And they have to have those brighter lights. They also have an electronic horn on theirs, which is, is a requirement. And then these Magura MT5E with the carbo texture, lightweight housing and uh, quad piston caliper they're radial, so they, they kind of follow the, um, they're not just like straight, they sort of orient around these 203 millimeter rotors. Just awesome, incredible stopping power, good cooling properties, uh, high quality stuff, but the brake levers themselves, because they are the, the E, they could be activating that rear light as like a brake, and that's a European requirement. It is not present on the US version. You're not getting brake lights or any kind of inner interaction with the motor. I just want to point that out. So there are a couple other things. There's like a license plate holder back here if you get the European one, because you do have to register these speed pedal. It's just a little bit different. And then it's possible that their kickstand might automatically spring up. I'm really glad that it is not the case here on the US version. It's just like a normal kickstand, you kick it up. And one thing that's really nice about this is you can twist that rear plastic portion and it raises or lowers the kickstand a little bit. So I just love that, it's adjustable. And over time, if this gets scuffed up a little bit or maybe you're parking on the side of a hill, you can just adjust that real quick. You don't need any tools, really great. Both wheels offer quick release. We've got a standard 135 millimeter hub spacing in the rear with a nine millimeter axle and uh, just a quick release skewer that goes through. It's kind of standard equipment. Up here, standard 100 millimeter hub spacing, but we have a 15 millimeter through axle. So it's extra sturdy, just adds some stiffness. And that's what I would expect with an, an air fork with a tapered steer tube and the, the wider stanchions. It's awesome, but it's also quick release. So quick release front and rear. And then we've got that seat clamp quick release. So if you're out touring, you can do some trail maintenance pretty easily. You just don't need a lot of tools, whether it's the kickstand or uh, the wheels themselves. Love that. The saddle has been pretty comfortable. Again, this is like a cube saddle and it's got this comfort flex foam and uh, a kind of a nice red highlight. You can see that throughout the frame. This bike only comes in one color scheme. So it's this like kind of a matte black and I think they call it iridium with some like glossy black highlights. The, the fork lowers are not perfectly matched to the frame, but it blends in nicely. And then we've got those red highlights that look really good. If we come over here, you can see the battery cover. It's just a black plastic, kind of a rubberized thing. Really nice, gonna be a lot more affordable to replace that if you lose it. Um, 
and the battery does actually lock to the bike. I've seen a couple of bikes recently, uh, one from Kona where you just, you took the battery off the bike using like a four millimeter hex wrench. And that was kind of surprising for me. This bike actually uses the Abus um, key card one where you can actually match this to a folding lock or um, other kinds of frame locks, some of the chain locks and things. I love that the high step version of this bike has two positions for adding a bottle cage or maybe a bottle cage and a folding lock in addition to all of that capacity in the rear. And I even noticed that there's some bosses down here on both sides, almost like you could add additional racks or something. I, I mean, that is, it's almost redundant because you already have this rack built in. Now that is one of the trade-offs. This bike does weigh more because of all the accessories and stuff. And you can't really remove this rack if you don't need it. But I feel like it really suits this bike, whether you're a commuter or someone who's touring and having access to a high speed motor is really cool. I like that. I like to go a little bit faster. There's a lot of adjustability with the Bosch drive system, uh, which we'll get to in a minute. But there are some limitations here because of the display that the bike comes with. This is the Intuvia. It does not uh, interface with their Bluetooth smartphone app. Okay, so you would have to upgrade to like the Kiox or the Nyon, pay some extra money for that. I still really like this display. It's very easy to read. You can remove it, take it right off the bike. There's even a little micro USB charging port on the side over here, but it, it only puts out five volts and maybe maybe not quite an amp. So, you know, if you're charging a, a phone or something while you're riding, it's just not gonna do quite as well as, again, like the Kiox or something. Uh, so anyway, just coming back to the way this bike functions and, and the choices that they've made, I, I think they've done an excellent job. And I wanna compliment that they give you the standard Bosch charger. This is a four amp charger, weighs about a pound and a half. The wall side unplugs, so it becomes fairly compact. And they've got that nice charging interface. You don't need any dongles or anything like that. Plug directly into the battery pack, or you can plug in down here into the bike. So you don't always have to take the battery off, which is kind of nice. Um, of course, you are gonna reduce the weight of the, the bike by like seven and a half pounds if you do take that off, which is, which is nice, makes this a lot easier to lift. But if you're charging the bike and you're plugged in down here and this crank arm passes by, well, it's gonna collide with the plug and it, you know, it can be kind of a, a little inconvenient. You'll notice that the crank arms do cycle backwards when you when you move the bike back. So keep that in mind if you're charging and you, you've got the cable plugged in, you don't wanna get that snagged or something. But I feel like the Bosch interface is pretty sturdy. It's not gonna crack like some of the um, more delicate plastic pieces I've seen from other bikes. So there is, there's the down tube of the bike. Here is the battery itself. This is 36 volts, 16.7 amp hours for roughly 625 watt hours of capacity. Excellent range on this, but we are gonna, you know, burn through the battery a little bit faster with that high power Bosch performance line speed motor. So just keep that in mind. Um, they do have a little charge level indicator built into this. And otherwise it's just this like aluminum alloy housing. Uh, it's it's kind of heavy. Uh, definitely nice that this is positioned low on the frame, keeps that weight distribution low, makes the bike more stable. Mounting it, it, it can be a little bit of a, a challenge. It's one of the trade-offs or complaints that I have about, frankly, I, I like the older Bosch power packs. They were plastic and they didn't maybe look as aesthetically as pleasing, but they were a little bit lighter weight. And I wanna make sure that little ant is off the battery before we put this in. So I, I think he is. So I can't just click this in. I actually need to have the keys and I need to, oh, there it is. Hey buddy, there we go, we got the ant. So before we put the battery in, you've got to put the key in up here like this. And then I actually have to twist it and raise that little locking mechanism, right? I, and, and that is tough, especially when you're filming. This just requires more hands, uh, more strength to do. So I set it in at the bottom, line it up. And then this is where I would like to just push it, but I can't, I need to kind of twist it. There we go. And then I can get into that like relaxed position. So there is this first kind of, you know, unlocked position. And once you get it there, you have to push on this little lever to get it all the way out. And I'm, I'm not gonna do that because my hands are full. So there we go. Battery's in, securely locked to the frame. And seems like there's enough room to, to manage all that. It's, it's just one of the trade-offs. If you want the nice aesthetic and the higher capacity battery, that's what you're gonna, you're gonna do. And I do like this cover. Again, we just 
kind of set this down in here and then click it in just like that. Now look at how nice that looks. Very clean. Black is a great color choice uh, for e-bikes or the accessories because they just blend in really nice. Look at this black plastic chain cover. Pretty lightweight, but it's going to keep your pants and stuff from touching, getting snagged on on the chain or that, that chain ring if, if the chain did come off or something like this. They do have a slap guard here to protect the paint. This is an aluminum alloy frame, lightweight aluminum. I uh, love that they've got internal cable routing and everything, so it looks really beautiful. And you just don't want to nick the frame up and have these like silver chips. So good job. Great attention to detail from Cube. And then the drivetrain itself is very nice. We have a, a standard a 38 tooth steel chain ring up front. And then if we come to the back, this is really impressive. We have Shimano Dior XT derailleur. This is like a Shadow Plus design. It's it's closer into the near the, the wheel and the spokes. It's not hanging down and sticking out as much. And then we've got this one-way clutch. So in the up position, it just tightens this. So you're not getting as much chain bounce. And it's something that's really, I think originally it came from mountain bikes and stuff. And now we see it frequently, especially for e-bikes and speed pedal X, where there's just, there's more movement um, going on. So yeah, in the unlocked position, it's gonna be easier to take the wheel off if you're doing like a, a flat repair, like we mentioned earlier. So put that back in the up position. Now look at this cassette. This is 10 to 51 tooth. So it's just over 500% gear ratio. That is enormous. I'm used to seeing like 11 to 46 maybe, 11 to 42, 11 to 32 or even 14 to 28. So this is like at the at the very high end. And that is excellent for those moments where you have to climb, you've got a heavy load, and you're just taking your time. Maybe you're trying to maximize your range or in a low level of assist, and you want to do work as the rider. On the other hand, and that's the, that's the big 51 tooth uh, ring back here. On the other hand, if you're going fast and you're like, yeah, I want to hit that 45 kilometer per hour, 28 mile per hour, well, then you, you drop all the way down here to that 10 tooth, cog and and that's going to support you it's going to give you that slow steady cadence even though the bike is just zooming so gotta love that you can see they've got the spoke magnet and the external sensor some of the newer uh designs i've actually seen where they'll they'll have the sensor and the magnet built into the disc brake rotor that is not the case here i don't know if it's just because magura isn't offering that or maybe they, they wanted the really big 203 millimeter rotors versus 180s or something we just don't have it not a big deal but if you are touring just keep your eye on that because if this goes up or down or gets bumped out of position you can get some errors up there on the display and be like well why isn't pedal assist working it's probably because that that magnet got uh, bumped out of position so down here we have bosch performance line speed i love the performance line motors even though they're a little bit louder and they do drain the battery a bit quicker. It's what you want if you're mountain biking or trying to hit and maintain higher top speeds. It weighs about six and a half pounds and the battery is about 7.8 pounds. So, you know, between the two of those, keeping that low end center is great. They seem to have maybe angled the motor a bit. You can see it protruding down here, but it has this plastic armor around it for protection, which is great. This thing supports pedal cadence uh, above 120 RPM is what they say, which is great. It means if you shift to a lower gear, and your pedal rate goes up, because you are it's basically like a climbing gear or starting gear, uh, the motor will be able to keep up with you. It's not gonna like fade out. And I definitely appreciate that because if it does fade out, well then the bike starts to lean on you more. You have to pedal even harder and you might end up switching to a lower gear and your pedal cadence stays high. You're just, you wouldn't be benefiting from the motor. So for me, the fact that Bosch is not only at 120, but maybe above 120 now, is really nice. The motor controller is listening to the rear wheel speed like we talked about, pedal cadence and pedal torque over a thousand times per second. So it's very sensitive. Bosch is known for having really good sensors. And then it can give you 40 Newton meters all the way up to 85 Newton meters of uh, torque support in addition to what you're doing. So it's a very high torque motor. I think I've seen Brosa does like some drive drive systems and motors that are like 90 newton meters and i think bafang has some that are like 100 uh, but for a mainstream company when you're thinking about like bosch shimano yamaha broza this is definitely at the higher end i feel like it does a really good job and if you're at the lowest level of assist eco you're getting like 60 percent support so there's your energy and then it can give you up to 60 percent of that back or in the highest level it's 340 percent so 
it's it's way more powerful than just you very capable i haven't had a problem on these bikes ever climbing a lot of times you're losing traction or doing a wheelie before the motor uh, quits on you so that is very nice again highly water resistant a huge network of dealers that can support or just replace the motor if there's ever an issue and i do like that they've got some like vented mesh here to maybe dissipate some heat and that it is it is lighter than some of the older um, Bosch motors. I think that they're using Isis splined interface for the cranks and stuff, just high end stuff. From what I've seen, Cube is doing a pretty good job in terms of inventory. They design and build these bikes in Germany. A lot of the parts do come from Asia. Yeah, if you're in the US, there are a number of dealers that now carry this. It used to be just a handful. There was like Motostrano in San Francisco, but I don't think they exist anymore. So I, I wanna call out uh, Seattle electric bikes and San Diego fly rides. I think there are a number of shops down in Southern California and there's there's some in Bend, Oregon and Ashland, Hood River and then Imigo bikes in Mesa, Arizona as being cube dealers, a place where you can actually go in and test ride these and get fitted and stuff. That's that's definitely some of what you're paying for with a more expensive bike like this, but you're getting the premium parts and something that's going to be more reliable. I want to come back to the, the lights because I was really impressed with how they work. I press the power button and then you can actually turn the lights on and off on this bike, which is pretty cool. That is not the case with a lot of Speed Pedal X. Probably in Europe, they're always on. So this light has this like cut off beam that isn't going to shine up into the eyes of oncoming cyclists or traffic. So that is really nice. I mentioned that it's really high powered, 110 lux. That's so like 550 lumens. It's got this like nice, I think metal housing, pretty sturdy and it's up high. So it's not down here on the arch where it's gonna bounce around a lot or get blocked by this fender. It's right where I would want it. It does seem like there's a little bit of crowding here with the Intuvia base mount. Um, it, it almost looks like the light's kind of aiming down a little bit into one side. It does not have side windows like some of the other lights that I've seen. It reminds me a lot of like the Supernova headlights. Um, and, and again, I think it's, it's, it's great. Uh, and you do have the reflective sidewalls, but if I were to change anything, I would add like a little window on the side just to increase your visual footprint, especially because this bike only comes in black. And then this rear light, looks like there are four little LEDs and it's it's very visible from a lot of different directions and it's far enough back that you're probably not gonna get blocked too much, even by panniers that bulge out a little bit from different angles. So great job on that. Now we can come back up to the display. I, I really like this thing. I'm just very familiar with it. I feel like it's large, it's high contrast. So even in bright light, like we have right now, you can still read it really easily. We have speed right there. It's in kilometers per hour, but I'll show you how to change that in a bit. We have battery capacity, five dots. So each one is 20% step. The room for improvement, all the new displays give you like a percentage readout, but it would have been nice if this was like 10 bars or percentage just to give you more precision. And then over here we have levels of assist and below that there's the light. So, oh, here it is. Press the, the headlight button, it says lights off. Very, very clear, lots of dedicated buttons. Although we do have you know, four buttons here and then we have even more buttons here, four more buttons on this remote pad. It's nice that they're here because it's easy to reach, but you know, there are certain things you, you need to actually reach over here to do like reset. And a lot of their newer, newer um, displays just don't have any buttons. So we're in off, press the plus button, we go up to eco, it's like 40 Newton meters of torque, tour 50, sport 60, turbo, 85 and that is pretty impressive as you're pedaling you can also see like the motor power over here on this little chart going up and down lots of great feedback there's even like shift recommendations these little triangles that point up or down and they're telling you hey shift your gears and i do love of course these shifters are very nice drxt we have a multi-step low shifter so you can just dump a bunch of gears if you're going to climb and we have a two-way high shifter so you can use your thumb or pointer finger just like that very nice it's just clean it's snappy even kind of rubberized so premium like nice feel it's these grips and stuff these are locking i think these are cube branded ergonomic give you a nice feel two finger levers on the brakes got the adjustable reach and the the stroke here is it comes towards you so modulating your brakes with your fingers i think is a little bit more natural than some of the other ones that push inwards this one's just more it's more intuitive magura makes really good stuff the brakes are great all around so that's kind of it, you know, down here it's got max speed. We could press the I there or over here and it's gonna give us several more menus. So average speed, trip time, range. Range is so cool because as you adjust assist levels from turbo down to eco, what recalculates and said, okay, 105 kilometers, 
instead of 36. That's that's phenomenal. It helps you plan your routes even though you're not getting a lot of precision from that, that battery infographic there. Odometer, trip distance, clock, max speed, average speed. We, we're just back, so it kind of loops. Works pretty well. The fourth button over here is walk mode. If we press that and then hold the plus button, the, the bike will walk itself, which is nice, because again, it, it does weigh 57 pounds and you might have cargo on this, and whether you get a flat or you're walking through grass and it's just uncomfortable to ride, you can you can easily adjust that. Um, while we're talking about comfort, you know, the suspension fork's great. It gives you the 100 millimeters of travel, but you could also get a suspension seat post. There are tons of good options these days. Uh, you know, Connect and SR Sun Tour. We've got Thud Buster. And I think Redshift Sports has a really nice looking one now too. That's like a, a suspension post. The diameter on this is 30.9 millimeters. So it's fairly wide and you might need a shim to sort of bring it down a little bit to get to 27.2 or something. A lot of the posts though come in multiple sizes. So just remember 30.9, this is a 350 millimeter stock post. I feel like we've gone through a lot of this stuff, but I wanna give you that secret. So if you're gonna go into the menu, you can hold reset and I, you have to press them at the perfectly at the same time. And then it says, okay, configuration. And you can raise or lower, make adjustments by pressing the light button or the power button or the plus and minus. So when we're ready to go to the next menu, we press I. Wheel circumference, language, units, time format, shift recommendation, that's those arrows I was talking about. Power on, display version, software versions, battery version. This is all the stuff the shops use. And then back, back around a clock. So to get out, we have to do the same thing. Press I and reset simultaneously. Hold them for, for a second here and it exits. So there you go. There's the full walkthrough on the Intuvia. Excellent display. I have another resource in the forums if you want a, a video just dedicated to that. But I think we're ready to hop on and actually enjoy this thing and show you how it sounds and performs. Every once in a while, we make a little friend while we're out riding. We've got a little slug <laughs> making its way across the trail. It's almost there. Now this guy really could use a speed pedelec, but he looks like he's, he's chilling. And I think I heard an eagle over there a minute ago. So it's, it's just so nice to, to get out for a ride. We'll be really careful when we stow that kickstand and maybe we'll start in eco. So this is the lowest level of assist. It's gonna be the quietest. Again, 60% power uh, matching or 40 newton meters of torque. In my opinion, even, even Eco makes a little bit of noise. It's not terrible, but this is just a noisier motor. And I, I forgot to mention, now with the newer generation, it's like Gen 4 Bosch motors, they are, they're awesome. They're using standard size chain rings. Some of the older ones had a tiny little chain ring that spun like two and a half revolutions per crank revolution, and it introduced some friction and drag. Is no longer the case. These cut out very quickly, they're very dynamic. So I'm, I'm very pleased with it. It's one of my favorite setups. Now we'll go to turbo, so you can compare the sound. So that's, we just got like above 120 RPM and that's why the motor's like, Wah! it's really no, it's not actually helping me anymore. It's just trying to keep up. Uh, so keep that in mind, you, you know, you do have to shift gears and this is where shift recommendation, if we look at the display, should be giving us an arrow. I don't know if I disabled it when we were in the settings earlier, but basically it would say shift gears. So let's do that. One of the other really cool things is that there's sh shift detection. So as you're shifting gears, the motor's supposed to back off a little bit. It's not perfect, it's a software thing, but it just reduces friction on the chain and it's not gonna bend your sprockets and mess the drivetrain up quite as much as another powerful motor that doesn't have shift detection. Feeling fairly stable here. You know, we're going pretty fast. Let's see if we can... Oh, there we go. See, it's there's the shift detection. We had the little triangle there a second ago. I'm gonna... You know, we are on gravel here. I don't want to push my luck too much, but the bike, the bike really goes. 
nice smooth braking. You can do that with just one hand. Whew. I'm gonna put the camera on the frame now and just give you guys a close up of that motor, do some more shifting and I'll have both hands on the, the grip so it'll be a little safer. Okay guys, we're looking down at that standard, not narrow wide, 38 tooth steel chain ring. We've got the 10 to 51 tooth cassette, 12 speeds, it's awesome. We do have shift detection with this motor controller. So as you shift gears, it eases off a little bit. You're not gonna cause as much wear on the chain uh, or the sprockets, which is very nice. I'm in the highest level of assist, so you'll get sort of the maximum uh, audio and get a sense for how this might sound. You are mounted to the frame, so it's, it's a little louder than average, but you can get the impression from some of those third person shots we had earlier. And I'm gonna shift some gears and we're gonna try to get up to that, that top speed. I'm gonna start off in a high cadence, meaning I'm spinning fast and that's when the motor tends to be the loudest. And then I'll switch to some higher gears, a more relaxed cadence. there we go we made it all the way up to 45 I was going into the wind a little bit I did have to work I'm a little bit winded from that but it makes it it's very satisfying the shifting was crisp the noise did dissipate a bit when I was in lower lower cadence but you know these pedals that's definitely an area I would I would change up they're just they just don't feel big enough for my feet I'm a little like right on that spindle and I'm not getting the full support that I'd like. front fender doesn't rattle too much when you're on the gravel, but as soon as I went off onto the grass and it was choppier, I could hear it. Back with my buddy Dave and he's gonna try out the Cube Catman Do and we just got a nice stretch cross country pack trail here. We will promise not to fall over. Yeah, go for it. Great with those fenders and hey Dave, if we turn on the lights maybe. I think if you oh that yeah yeah looking good here. Let me see the headlight too. Oh yeah, and we're pretty much daytime right now. You can go ahead and pass me. Well, no, there's all that rear lights really stands out. Does it actuate? Yeah. With the brakes? You know, it's it's not wired into the brakes. It's just always on. But it stands out even in the daylight like this. And the slightly wider tires are giving him good stability and a little bit of extra comfort here on this gravel trail. Very nice, man. You got some off-road action there for a second. <laughs> we testing the bike out? <laughs> we're just getting a little distracted. A little distracted. 
There's a lot to see around here. Now, if we go this way, the trail kind of loops around. <laughs> there he goes. Beautiful. They must have extra poles. You can hear the, the drivetrain like zzzz, so it's gonna catch really quickly when you start pedaling. Nice. Here, let's swap back. What'd you think? This thing's great. Yeah? Yeah, absolutely lovely. You really know, smooth, the, love the shifting. The motor is a little bit louder, uh, but this is like the high performance motor from Bosch. It's based on the, the CX. Right. Uh, this is the speed. Uh, how did that feel to you? Uh, very smooth. Cool. Yeah, really liked it. No, no problems, like it's, it's, uh, expected i guess yeah of course you know bosh yeah um, yeah i thought you handled it really well even going off road for a second there with the slightly wider tires these are kind of hybrid you know they don't have the traction like your bike here this is the the giant stance e so you know full suspension cross country versus kind of a hard tail almost like a trekking bike with the 625 yep. watt hour battery the fenders i noticed when i was riding it the front fender was rattling around a bit yes uh is you notice that too oh yeah yeah, they, they would do well to tighten that up somehow. It's just connected with like this little rubber, rubber band yeah. kind of thing. And then you got a kickstand here and, but you know, all in all, this is a pretty functional bike. You, oh, this would be a killer commuter. Yeah, yeah, especially, you know, you got the slightly higher speeds and stuff and then the lights. Yeah. Thanks for doing the ride with me. Appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Well guys, what a blast. That is the Cube Kathmandu Hybrid 45 625. It's a little bit heavy, it's a little bit expensive, but it is awesome hardware and performance. And I think it looks beautiful too. So Cube really did a good job on this. As I mentioned before, I measure everything by hand and put it back at electricbikereview.com where I have some comparison tools. I've reviewed several other Cube models and other bikes that I categorize as his Speed Paddle X Class 3 commuting, uh, touring so you can compare these back to back and you can also jump onto the forums there and get direct feedback from people who actually own these bikes they aren't just borrowing them for a few days again big thank you to city cycles who prepped this bike and received it and coordinated with me to to cover the bike all of my reviews are, are done for free my goal is to be really transparent and cover a wide variety of bikes uh, to help you make an informed decision i realize this is like an expensive bike and you want to know as much as possible so maybe you can order a suspension post before it gets there and just know what to expect so i genuinely think this is one of the the better bikes out there i hope you guys have fun riding whatever you're on i love you and we'll see you next time